today. Amen. And we just want you to know it's the end of the year, but I love the Lord just like I do if we were in the beginning of the year. We are just grateful to be here. We are grateful for uh, the love of Christ and his spirit. And uh, we thank God for the last Sunday in the year. Amen. And uh, we want to make sure we get something from the word today. And uh, we just pray that uh, as you end your year, you know, don't wait till the first of the year to make a change. You, 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 you have to be what you're going to be all year long. It always starts with today. Amen. It doesn't start with what I'll do next year. What you'll be next year will, we, will be decided today off of the decision today you make to do what you got to do today. You don't become a pilot by wanting to be a pilot. Amen. You got to go to school. And you got to go to the first day of class. So uh, we are looking for God to make us all soldiers. But we got to start fighting today. Amen. We are so grateful for his spirit. And uh, we're going to get ready to get right into the word. If you would, uh, bow your heads. God, we thank you for your grace, your peace, and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. And uh, God, we pray, God, that your presence uh, would be upon us today, God, that you would uh, Move us out of the spirit of self. God, that you would allow your, your anointing to touch hearts today. God, that uh, the son of man that don't know you, that the discouraged, uh, that the person ready to give up. Uh, God, the person who feels like they're in the minority, that they feel like uh, that they're by themselves. I pray that you would encourage that person today. Uh, God, that you would touch those that are sick, those that are struggling with COVID, those that are struggling with cancer, those that are struggling with diseases, God, that there is no cure for, that you would give comfort to those that are in trouble, those that are suffering and in pain. I pray that you would be their comforter. And I pray, God, you would allow me to decrease, that you may increase. God, that you would speak through me. Uh, God, that you would humble me down, that your voice would be heard and not self. Uh, God, we pray. That those that don't know you would say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? That someone would choose to follow you. And God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we get ready to get into the word today, I want to end the year by giving uh, us some scriptures to talk about being able to handle being in the minority. The title of our sermon today is Going with the Minority. When you look in the dictionary and you look up the word minority, it says it's the smaller number of two groups that form a whole. So while we are walking with Christ, we have a decision to make. Now, if you are living for Christ, you're in the minority. Amen. I didn't say if you're going to church. There's a lot of people go to church, but they ain't with the master. They go to church. I am in the minority. And sometimes it's good to be with the minority rather than to be with the majority. Now, when it comes to a democratic society, we thank God for the ability to vote. Because that gives you a chance to choose the majority, chooses the winner. But in the scriptures, when it comes to making it to heaven, Otis, we must be in the minority. Everybody ain't going to go along with what's right. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that we, we must go along with right. And right now, society is not presenting the right message. Commercials have changed. What used to be right, they say is wrong. Amen. What used to be wrong, society say is right. Sin, oh, come on, help me. Sin has put on a tuxedo, tuxedo, dressed itself up to look real nice. But we must stay in the minority. So what I want to do is I want to read the scriptures. And if you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Verse 12, and I'm going to read through verse 20, and this is what it says. Therefore, all things 
Whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Verse 13, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein, thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus transitions. In verse 15, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening, ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? No. Or figs of thistles? No. Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt true tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, we're talking about going with the minority, but I, I want, I want y'all to pray with me. Can I get some people to pray with me? One of the objectives in this message is in these couple of verses, Jesus covers the sum totality of man. Man's sum totality. If you would go back up to verse 7 in this same chapter, coming to verse 12, Jesus is saying, whatever you ask for tells where your desires are. So he said, ask, and it shall be given you. Now, there's some people that, that you, if you want to tell if a beggar on the street, when he holds up his sign, says, hungry, I will work for food, or can you give me something to eat? Now, most of them looking for a donation, and ain't nothing wrong with that if that's what God lay on your heart to do. I'm not, I'm not kicking against that. Okay, but, but one of the things is, sometimes, for a person that is really hungry and you really want to know if they're really hungry, you tell them, I'll tell you what, meet me over at that store and I'm going to buy you something to eat. Amen. Now, we, we don't know. Now, now, you can give them money. That's okay. But they may not be hungry for the same food you're thinking. Uh -huh. They may want some Jack and his friends uh -huh. may be what they're hungry for. You know, people have desires. So the sum totality of man is what you ask, what you strive for in life, and what you are, and who you become. Stop. First thing, you got to ask for what you want. The second thing is you got to strive for what you asked about. Now, asking is good, but asking that mean you are striving for it. You know, you can ask God to give you a brand new house on the hill, but if you don't get on the job and start working, you won't have what you need to get it. So a lot of people say, God, do this for me, but there is no striving on their effort to be able to get to where what they're asking for. I'm asking God to do something for me. Now I'm striving for what God wants. And later, I'll become what I strive for. So Jesus, in this particular chapter, talks about asking, and then he talks about striving, and then he talks about what you become. Your fruit tell you what you've strived for. Y'all with me? See, so it's not as complicated, but he was trying to break this down. So Jesus starts this off and says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, now Jesus is giving a little principle here before he gets to it. Now he's saying what you've asked for, what you desire in life, make sure you treat other people like you want to be treated. I, I use it like this. Do unto others in the spirit of Christ as you would have others to do unto you in the spirit of Christ. Now, now what I mean by that is, you, you, you got to know what you're asking. Amen. Follow with me. 
You got to ask the right things, but you got to be able to treat people the right way. Now, now all this got to do with what you ask. What you ask God for him to do to you, you got to make sure you're doing to others. Because see, asking is the first, it's the first thing that shapes who you are, what you ask for. Now, if, if, if you really want to know what a person is made from and what they, they're all about, just check their cell phone. How many hours did they spend here? How many hours did they spend here? Check the checkbook. Where are they spending their money? If you don't see God in anywhere in their checkbook, it tells you what they're asking for. Now, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get to a point. People say, I don't want nobody to do nothing for me. You know, I, you know how people say, well, I don't want nobody doing nothing for me. So I ain't going to do nothing for nobody else. They think they're keeping the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. But that ain't in the spirit of Christ. That's because of your rotten, rotten hurt. Can I get amen? It's a lot of people don't know what to ask because they hurt. They say it was a young lady who had a boyfriend. She loved the boyfriend so much that she got a tattoo of his name on her arm. After her and her boyfriend broke up, she wondered what would she do with the tattoo of another man if she wanted to find somebody else. So the, the, the girl decided, what I'm going to do, I, I, I'm going to make the decision, I'm going to get it removed. And it was very painful to get the name removed off the arm. And it left a scar where the name was. So as it is with society, you got a lot of people that are walking around hurting from previous relationships. It doesn't matter whether something happened on your job, happened in your family. You know, people allow things to happen. When things happen to people, people begin to treat other folks and say, I don't want nobody to help me. I ain't helping nobody else. I'm doing to others that they would do unto me. I don't want nobody to do nothing for me. I ain't going to do nothing for nobody. I, 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 somebody hurt me. I ain't let nobody else hurt me. You know what? I ain't fixing to help nobody and see about nobody else. And I don't want nobody checking on me. That's a lie. Everybody want to be loved. You can lie and say you don't, but everybody want to be cared for. Everybody want to be shown some kind of attention. Somebody want to know that they mean something in life. So Jesus said, whatever you looking for, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you in the spirit of Christ. So the way you treat other folks, the way you judge other people, the, the way you judge folks is the way you're going to be judged. Can I get an amen? amen? So Jesus tries to set the stage by saying, ask and it shall be given. And he begins to talk about the mind. And, and you, you, you learn how to, to think. Can I get an amen? amen. Can, can, can I think? Tell, there was a story told by Anthony Evans about one of these soul brother restaurants out in Dallas, Texas, where you can get you some good soul food. Okay. Can I get an amen? amen? I'm talking about collard greens and black eyed peas and fried chicken, fried pork chops. I'm talking about some southern cooking. Now he said, now, ain't no sense in you thinking about no diet when you come to this restaurant. Because at this restaurant, they're not concerned about healthy eating. This is a soul food restaurant. They're not, they're not cooking any diets with low calorie. Everything there is for your taste. I'm making, I'm making a point. When we want to do better, you can't think about that restaurant if you want your health to be a little better. And the doctor tell you you got to change your eating habits. Now, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to bait you now. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling you in. You don't get closer to God by thinking about things you shouldn't be doing. See, there's an empty hole where some people put themselves in their mind and start thinking about, well, what if this happened? How am I going to handle this? What if this happened? How am I going to handle this? Some of the stuff you're thinking about ain't reality, but you're putting yourself in a place of failure. Amen. You don't think about things that are not going to profit you or help you in your mindset. Amen. Come, on, come on, help me. Amen. 
I don't need to think about that restaurant if I'm trying to eat better because that's not going to do anything but make me think about fried chicken and pork chops and how I really miss them. So, you, you know, you don't think about your, your old girlfriend from 10 years ago, Otis, and your mind on her for the whole time or somebody else thinking about somebody they had a relationship with and they think about them all the time. Come on now, come on. Your mind need to be on where you are seeking and where you're trying to head. Can I get amen? Now, when we get down here, Jesus has already said, make sure you ask for the right things and make sure in your asking, your disposition is you want to do to others as you would have them to do unto you. See, a lot of folks look at other people and judge them. But they don't want them to be judged like they don't want to be judged like they judge other folks. Sometimes people jump to conclusions with people and put them in different places, and the person not even there. You don't even understand what's going on. You you don't even know what's behind. You saw something. How many of y'all know everything is not like it look? Amen. Everything was not what it seems. Come on now. So now we get down to verse thirteen, and it says, "Enter ye in at the straight gate." Somebody says straight gate. For the wide, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Now, now, now he uses straight. Now this word straight in the Greek is stenos or stenos, and it means narrow. And it also means it's narrow from obstacles standing close about. So it means you got, to, you got to make sure you're going straight because there's a lot of obstacles in this particular place and you got to, you got to really walk real narrow. Okay. And, 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 and walking through the valley of the shadow of death, they said when shepherds would travel and, and, and they would be going down a pathway, they said the pathway on some of the mountain sides was so narrow that only one person could go through at a time. See, in other words, there was nobody else who could go side by side with you. Some of the paths were so, so restricted that only one person could go through at a time. Now, now, when we start talking about being saved and living right and striving for the right things, everybody else is not striving to go in through the narrow gate. Now, there are some things in the scriptures that are black and white. Can I get amen? Amen. Jesus started off with about 680 something laws that he gave to the children of Israel or 613 laws that he gave to the children of Israel. 613. But, but God knew that with the 613 laws, man still couldn't get it right. So what did he do? He took the 613 and he broke them down to two. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy might and with all thy soul and all thy strength. And then the second one, love thy neighbors thyself. So he took 611, 613, and he broke it all the way down. But in between, he broke it down to 10. Because he gave you the Ten Commandments, which was a further breakdown of the law. But, but what I'm trying to tell you is he was trying to give them things to look at. But now Jesus said, all you got to do is just keep two. So now when you look on TV, everything has changed. The standard for marriage has changed. The standard for life has changed. The standard for telling the truth has changed. Come on. If you think politicians don't set the way for you to get to heaven, there are some godly ones. But let me tell you something, they show few. I, I, I look to the scriptures for my direction. But why is it that everybody now is trying to fit in with what the world thinks? The world and the church would never be on one accord. Amen. Never. 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 Somebody say never. 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 You got to go through the narrow way. The narrow. The narrow. Jesus said now go through the straight gate because there's some obstacles you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to make sure you, you, you're keeping everything tight because everybody else is doing it that don't mean you got to do it that's right, that's right. come on help me that's right. you know god god mind toward sexual promiscuity has never changed it's been the same sex is beautiful yeah. somebody said well, why are you saying that because god made it Amen. for married folks the standard don't change but when you look at tv 
every little boyfriend with a girlfriend feel like if you really like me, you got to lay in bed with me. And TV is only adding to it. Athletes play sports, but it used to be a time in our life where you never heard anyone curse on TV. Because you had a board that watched what was presented on TV. And this board said what was allowable and not, but that board is out the door now. Come on, help me. All I'm trying to tell you is society is now trying to set the mold on what's right. So every boyfriend and girlfriend got to be in bed with one another in order for it to be okay. And what has happened is society has adopted that as a standard. Come on, y'all. I'm just. It's okay to lie as long as it is going to be an advantage to helping the person get where they need to go. There, there are some things that people are doing now. We're finding the church is trying to get with the government to try to get things done. The church job is not to be shoulder to shoulder with the government so that we can move together. I was talking to uh, John Brown and he was bringing something to my attention that one of, one of the sites, the pastor put a notification out there that said, you know, we believe in equal rights of marriage for two men and two women, basically. But a little later on in writing, but we still have the right to hold to our biblical views. But you can't have it one way or another. Either God made marriage or God didn't make marriage. Come on, y'all. See, it's, it's a broad way. Now, when people say, when you start talking this way, why are you talking about that? Murdering is wrong. Committing adultery is wrong. Two men is wrong. Two women is wrong. The, the, the problem is, I still love the adulterer. I still love uh, uh, the homosexual. I still love the liar. I still love the cheater. I still love the dope addict. You love them all, but still there is a way that we must strive for. Come on, help me. We, we got to fight for what we're looking for. Jesus is saying, it ain't going to be easy. Listen to me. I don't care what you say. When you bring in your child up in school, there are going to be some challenges that you're going to have in school. So if your teacher gives your child a book to read on how to perform witchcraft, the parents are now in a dilemma. Amen. Come on, help me, y'all. Okay. Can I just make it real? If your child comes home with how to perform the basics of witchcraft, and this is our new read in school, the parents are now in a dilemma. What's the dilemma? Should I allow my child to start learning about witchcraft when they won't even remember or, or mention Jesus' name? They don't want to have anything to do with that. They, they want to push all that out with the truth, but they want to be able to implement things that are ungodly in the name of education. Come on, follow me. Now, now come on. There are some things your kids read and they can discern the difference. But if somebody send your child home with a book on the beginnings of satanic worship, oh, come on now. There are some things that you can't go along with. There are some things that are biblically wrong. There are some things that you got to choose the narrow path on. Amen. A young lady come and give some advice. Say, well, my boyfriend said he'll leave me if I don't sleep with him. Goodbye. That's the answer. Goodbye. If that's what he has to do, if he really loves you, he can wait. Amen. Now, come on. Those who have messed up, you can always start over. Amen. There is no sin that God cannot forgive you. So you can love people. I was out in the world of sinner doing everything. Somebody still loved me, but they couldn't approve of what I did. Come on, help me. Whatever... You applaud, you encourage. That's right. Be careful what you celebrate. Amen. The late Robert Zachariah made that statement. What you applaud, you encourage. Amen. Be careful what you celebrate. That's, right. That's why we cannot celebrate everything that the world is celebrating now. Amen. See, everybody wants to fit in and make God, you know, make God some kind of uh, uh, being in the sky that's full of love but has no standards. 
Love always has a standard. Older sitting there and telling the child, don't go past the wood line. Come on, help me. I, I love the story in Lion King where Mufasa is telling Simba, we have a limit where our kingdom ends. I, you know, but, but, but Simba thought that if I'm a lion and I got all this power, I ought to be able to go anywhere I want to go because I'm a lion. But he was telling them that we have boundaries that we don't go past. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just because you have power to go past don't mean you need to. And what I find out is there are places that we don't need to go to to prove a point to anybody. We don't have to get outside of the kingdom to win folk. All we got to do is preach the gospel of the kingdom and people will come in. All we got to do is love the sinner no matter what their sin is. We must love the sinner man. Listen to me. You cannot hate a person and expect for them to follow you. I don't care what they're in, we must love them. But it's one thing to love somebody and it's another thing to approve of them so you can love them. Jesus said, broad is the way and wide is the gate. But what did it lead to? He says, it led to destruction. So when you go along with everybody, you're going to find yourself in a hole. When when I look at this and think about this, everybody wants to be somebody. Yes, sir. Everybody wants to be approved. Yes, but what I find out today in the church, and, and, and let me go and say this. We have been through some things in 2020 yes, sir. where politics have nestled itself into the body of Christ. Yes, sir. And folks think that God and politics go hand in hand. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. You know what you need to do? You need to live a godly life as a normal man so he can put you in an office to be a, a representative of the people so you can have God things at heart. But listen to me. Republican Party, Democratic Party, Libertarian Party will never get you into heaven. I don't have to be in any of those to get to heaven. Who I vote on, what my conviction is, that's what I do. But there's no mandate. And so people now have gotten so political and, and, and so crooked and so divisive and so insidious to try to deceive people through politics to make them think that's the way we're righteous. Come on, help me. Come on, come on. So folks are all out caught up in everything else. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to vote and I'm going to look to Jesus. But I'm going to walk through the narrow way. See, you got to be careful who you throw your money in with. You got to be careful who you come into agreement with. See, God says, strike it no hand with no man quickly, Otis. Don't agree with folks real quickly. You know, some people say, well, you know what? You believe the same thing I believe. Follow with me. I'm going somewhere. Well, you know what? Me and you agree 100% on this particular issue. But when you peel the onion back, they really with the wide, wide gate and the wide group because in what they agree with you on is for a different reason. Not only do they agree with you on that, but there's a whole lot of things behind the scene they agree with that are not like God. And listen to me, I don't have any problem saying, yeah, I can agree with you on this, but this is the reason why I agree with it. Somebody said motive got a lot to do with it. Motive answers the question. We got to make sure we're on the narrow path and that we're doing things for the right motive. Now when we talk about what you strive for Jesus comes down and said, he said because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Jesus is saying that there are going to be few people that find it. Follow where I'm going. You know how people uh, well, I was listening to one of the deacons say, you know, at every funeral, everybody going to heaven now. If, if, if you notice, at every funeral you go to, no matter how people live, they're up in heaven now. Amen. Wait, 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 come on. I, can, I, can I talk about this just a little bit? You can cuss. You can lie. Now, now, now listen to me. Some people say, what you mean by that? Now, why, why, why are you trying to be condemned? Now, I ain't talking about cuss. I'm talking about folks that as a habit, that's the way they talk. 
They live a lascivious lifestyle. They li Listen to me. I come out and I just wrote me an album. And I come up and I get to the mic and I say this. I just want to thank God for this achievement. Now, when your album is presented, it's all vulgar. It's all got ugly things on it. It degrades women. It talks about sex like it's nothing. It, it talks about cheating and lying and stealing. But then I want to get up front and tell somebody, I want to thank God for this particular award. No. Wait, wait, wait. How can you thank God for something is directly against God? And then when people do nice deeds, they think the nice deeds are enough to get them in. God looking for fruit, not just a good deed. Amen. Come on, help me. Amen. Follow with me. People got a way of trying to get you to agree with them in one area so they can say, don't you agree with me in all other areas? Come on, come on, come on, follow me. Somebody say, I got to be what I say. And what I say, I got to strive for. So this preacher got on the bus one day. And when he got on the bus, the bus driver met him. And when the bus driver met him, the bus driver said to him, you know, here you change, sir. And he took his change and the preacher went back and he sat down in the bus. And he began to count his money. And he said, he gave me, he gave me too much he gave me too much money. So he went back up to the bus driver and he said, you gave me 50 cent too much. And the bus driver looked at the preacher and said, I was at your church on yesterday and you were preaching on honesty. So I purposely gave you more than what I should have given you because I wanted to know if you live the sermon you preach about. Now, God ain't called us to be tempters and to tempt people to prove what they are. So don't y'all start doing that at home, trying to see what somebody going to do in your house. And Now, you, God ain't giving you the liberty to do that, but I'm giving you a story. The story is, the man was immature to him, but he wanted to know, is this preacher what he say he is? And you know, you got a lot of saints. And man, I went in the store and, and, and God blessed me, man. They gave me back $50 too much. Hallelujah. God bless me. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on now. No, no, somebody got, somebody draw going to be out $50. So somebody going to be short. So if you get $50 too much from somebody at a cash register, you don't go on to my look at God and bless me. You take the money back that's owed them because you didn't get it the right way. It's another thing when somebody gives you something and they say, well, we're giving you this extra such and such and such. We're going to give you this amount off. Well, well, that's a blessing. But you don't take something that's not yours. Amen. You don't hold on to anything that's not yours. You got to be honest. You got to be with the narrow group. Ain't no every blessing, a blessing talking about somebody that gave you more than you're supposed to get. You saying, I got a blessing. We, we, let, let, me, let, me, let me go on. I was, I was dealing with something here at church some years ago, when we had started out with our equipment, we were just getting audio equipment, and we had bought some mics from a certain particular vendor, and we had put everything in, and we were having some issues with the people we bought our equipment from, because uh, lo and behold, John looked on the equipment, and it had scratches across it, and we found out that the equipment wasn't new. It was used equipment sold to us as new. So we, we, we had the manager to come to the, to the place where we had to set up, and he was looking at the equipment. And all of a sudden, the man started going off on me, and he began to go off on John. And this is what he said. He said, you know what? I'm tired of these church people. They always want something for nothing. I said, sir, you gave us used equipment, but it was supposed to be new. He said, yeah, I know that. But every time churches come down there buying stuff, they always think we ought to give them stuff for free. He said, you know, they always want a way out. And I'm, I'm, he judging all the churches, and he, he like he jumping on me and jumping on John. And I looked at him and I said, uh, sir, when I went down to your place and I got my equipment, you go check with the person running your customer service. When we got all our equipment we got here, we began to count what we had. You all gave us a mic that you didn't charge us for. Uh -huh. 
And he was looking. And I said, and by the way, sir, we called down to your customer service and told them we got a mic that we hadn't paid for. You need to charge us for this. No, I didn't go and say, look how God blessed us. Somebody going to be out in inventory. I told him, I said, so if you think we want everything free, why would we go and pay you for something you didn't even know you gave us? See, integrity always talks when you go the narrow route, you do the right thing. Come on, come on. You got to have it. Come on. We got to have integrity. Integrity keeps you in the minority. There are some things that people would do as long as it's to their advantage. Some people got conviction as long as it's to their advantage. There was a story told of a lady who was at a church and a man called into the church and he said, may I speak to the boss hog? And the lady said, I beg your pardon. She said, there's no boss hog here. Would you like to talk to the pastor? And the man said, yeah, get me the top hog in there. I need to speak to the big hog. She said, once again, there's no big hog here. All we got is the pastor. He said, ma'am, all I'm trying to do is give $20,000 to your ministry. And the lady said, well, hold on, let me go get the hog. <laughs> when money went to talking, he was no longer pastor. He was boss hog. Oh, come on, help me, y'all. How many of y'all know we got to keep our integrity? You know, we, we find ourselves where people don't want to go through the straight gate. They want to go through the broad gate or the wide gate. Have y'all ever seen anybody do something for something small and they have to pay for it for a long time? I was thinking about uh, when we talk about the straight gate, everybody teach you to cheat and lie to get where you need to go. You know, ain't it amazing you can have millions of dollars and still want to cheat to not pay for something worth two or three dollars. You just want to get by. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So there was a young man, he came in to interview at a company. And they were interviewing for the top executive job, and this guy was sharp. He had been in the company a long time, and they were changing leadership, and everybody had their eyes pegged on him. And they said, we want this man to be the executive. So the board of directors had gotten together. They interviewed him. He blew the interview away. Oh. I mean, he dealt with them, answering every question, knowing what kind of plan, his strategic plan. He knew what his overall plan was. He had it all down. When he got through interviewing, all those people on the board of directors looked, they just said, wow, this guy's something else. And they said, we ain't got no problem. Said, we're going to come back and close the interview out after lunch. They went with them to lunch, and when they went to lunch, two of the men that were on the board of directors interviewing were standing behind the young man that was executive. When you, get, when you go through the line and you get butter, it costs, I think it was a couple of cents for butter in a little cup. But what he did is he got the butter in the cup and he took a napkin and he put it over it. And when she rung him up, she didn't ring him up for the butter, but he purposely put his napkin over the butter so that he didn't have to pay for it. And the two on the board of directors, not being judgeful, but they said if he will steal butter from a cafeteria, I know he'll steal from this company. When they got back after the interview, they told him, said, well, sir, we've decided we don't need you in that position. And we know you've been this, with this company for years, and we're also going to let you go too. Integrity is not just in big things. It's what you do in the small things. It's the decisions you make every day at home. When I talk to young parents and they talk about going through the narrow path, it's easy to tell your kid what's right when they see you doing wrong. It's easy to tell your kids do what's right and you doing what's wrong. As we close on this year, as we go through society, I am in no mind forced to go along with everybody else because they say it's okay. And what I find a trend is that what's going on out there wants to come in the church and change the mindset of what we should think. 
Right is going to be right today and tomorrow. So Jesus ends it here. He says, you know what? A corrupt tree can't bring forth good fruit. Whatever fruit you're bearing tells you where you're striving. You know, somebody told me like this. I heard a preacher years ago said it like this. He said it's like going through two sides of an oil funnel. He said either you can come at the wide side of the oil funnel or you can come at the narrow side of the oil funnel. And I, I think about that. What would you mean? If you come at the wide side of the oil funnel, everybody's going to be able to be in it. And you'll start off, everything will be seen from, you can't tell me what to do. I can do what I want to do. But when you stay in sin for a long time, at the end of that oil funnel, it starts to get narrow. Sin always restricts you. What you thought was fun ends up being restrictive. Come on, help me. You start off smoking this, you end up snorting that, you end up doing this, and then you find yourself with nothing. You own your job. You got a good job making good money, but you try to go and steal $20. Come on, come on, help me. People working at the post office got a great job making good money and they go into an envelope and take $20 out of an envelope to lose a job making several thousand dollars a year. Come on, come on. Fruit that you bear, you come in through that, that wide part and it starts narrowing out. And there's one thing about it. When you stay in sin for a while, It'll start restricting you. It'll, it, it'll start working on you. You'll start looking like what you live in. Come on, help me. Yes, or you can choose to come in at the narrow end like we're supposed to, the narrow end of the oil spout. And you can live. And you know what? Sometimes John said, well, you know what, man? Somebody said, well, man, come on, do this, John. And then somebody, well, yeah, well, you know everybody else going to be doing that. You know, we all supporting that. And you know, biblically, it's not supported by God. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to pass on that. You got to come in in a narrow way. It seems like it's restrictive. You know when you when you first get saved and you you, you start you you've been liberated by God and you're going through you you got things that you you got you got to maneuver your way through. You got to squeeze through some stuff. You got to you got to slide by some things. You, you know it's narrow. Amen. But if you keep on walking in Jesus, it's just like the oil spot. Life broadens out for you. You start saying, mm, "What I thought was restrictive is liberating." So when you start out doing it the right way and you, 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 you find that everybody's saying, well, you can't do nothing. What you find out is if you keep living for Christ, life will broaden out for you. Amen. You'll find out you got more liberties than you ever did. It almost be like they put you in a room, but God make the room bigger than it ever been. God, God, God know how to expand something that looks small. So either you come through the wide end and life is large for you and it restricts you in sin or you can come through the narrow place and as you walk with Christ, life can broaden out for you. So you know what I want you to do? I want you to remember this. What you ask for, what you strive for, you become. Somebody say, well, I want to be a, I want to be a dedicated Christian. Start today. Come on. Think about the things that are true Things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Get your mind on the right thing. Delete the old girlfriend phone number out your phone. You've been married 20 years. Why you got her number in your phone? What y'all talking about? Come on now, come on, help me. You can witness to her, but you don't need to be talking to her every week. Every five days, you and her getting together, eating lunch together, and you married. Come on, I, can I get some help in here? You got to bear fruit. You got to bear the right kind of fruit. I, I told people this. When you're raising your kids, let them see what you want them to be. What you want them to see, you got to be it. Because you know what? Whatever kids see, that's what they'll become. You know why? Because they'll look at you. Even if they take a try, wrong, a turn on the wrong road, wrong path, they know what they saw at home. So what you want to see, you got to be. Get to get amen. So we got to travel the narrow path. So I just want all you out there to be encouraged. If you feel like a minority, you feel like you always in the minority, and you feel like, well, you know, everybody's, 
You know, I remember one point on my job, everybody would get the gossip. They would go on the group and leave me out. A little later on, I, I began to thank God that they didn't put me in the group. Because I wonder why all of them clustering and they don't tell me. I found out later it was mess. Some things you ought to be excluded from. It's, it's all right. When people treat you ugly, treat them kind. When people you do you wrong, do them right. Love the son of man. Because somebody loved you. Somebody, what kind of preacher are you preaching? I believe the gospel can change anybody's life. And I believe that we got the love of God in us and we can love anyone. So anything that we, we can love the person, but that don't mean we got to love what they're doing. We got to give them a message of hope. We got to give them a message of love. We got to give them a message they can go to. Then we can tell them, look at this big mansion I just built for you. Now you can leave your shack and you can go there. I ain't going to tell you shack down until I got another place you can live. Can I get an amen? And so we're going we to look for God to let us walk this narrow path. It may seem tight right now, but as we keep walking, it's going to broaden out for us. It's going to seem like God, this ain't, you know, this is the right way to live. You know what I had an atheist tell me? He said, you know what, Reginald? I said, yeah, my brother. He said, would you live this way? And when you dead, it's done. And ain't no heaven. See, what he was doing was, he was saying, now he don't believe in God, supposedly. But he asking me, if I wasn't living for Christ, you could be doing a whole lot of things that, you know, Christianity say you can't do. And if you're dead, he said, look at all the stuff you missed doing. And I looked at him. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Ain't the enemy, he's trying to be wise to you. He, he was trying to buckle me in and say, it's a lot of things you would be doing if you knew you were dead and done. You could do it now because when life over with, you don't exist no more. I looked at him and said, I done lived in sin. And I done lived with my friend. Yes, <laughs> this is what I told him. I said, I done lived in sin and I done lived with my friend Jesus. And this lifestyle is better. So if, if I died and was done, it's better to live this way than the way I used to. Amen. This ain't phony, ain't put on. How many of y'all know, when you fall in love with God, you will find out this is the best life to live. Can I get amen? Let us pray. God, we just thank you for your grace, your peace, and your mercy. And we thank you, O oh God, that narrow is the way. We know straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. God, you said in your word that hell hath enlarged herself without measure. And many there be that go therein. And God, we know of some people listening today. They're religious. They go to church. But they've never made a commitment to give their life to you. And God, we just pray, God, that they can come to the mic. No matter what sin they're in. They know when you're convicting them of right and wrong. They know when something is down in them that is against you. So God, I just pray God that that son of man, that church person that's been in church all their life but never really made a decision to give their life to you. Let them say, Lord, I stand before you a sinner. And Father, I ask you to forgive me for all the ugly things I've done against you. Lord, come into my heart. Liberate me. Be my Lord and my Savior. And make me free. God, I surrender my life to you right now. God, have your way in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.